Cold drinks are so good on a hot day. And even more importantly, you've got to have plenty of liquids on board to stay hydrated. But how do you make the most of your limited power and space to keep your drinks cold? You need a system. I'm Carolyn Sherlock, and on this episode of the Boat Galley Podcast, I'll share my best tips for keeping drinks cold when you're cruising in a hot climates. Now, today's episode of the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by Mantis Marine, maker of the Mantis Anchor, now available in models with and without a roll bar. Proven to set reliably in the most challenging bottoms, the Mantis Anchor digs like no other, making anchoring safer and boating more enjoyable. Mantis Marine brings to market practical, durable, and affordable marine products, including anchoring gear, scuba diving accessories, and a rechargeable waterproof headlamp for hands-free lighting. Visit mantismarine.com and see for yourself. If you're in a hot climate, drinks can take up half your refrigerator space or more, and chilling them down puts a big load on your power supply. Where we were cruising in the Sea of Cortez and now in Florida and the Bahamas, it's 90 plus degrees for eight months of the year. And we've learned four important things to keep us in cold drinks without totally draining the batteries. The first is to have a plan. How long the refrigerator is open to get drinks out and put drinks in will have a definite effect on the power use. If you know right where the drink you want is located, you'll save a lot of open door time. And yes, it's important even with a top-loading refrigerator. Designate specific places for each type of drink and stick to it. For us, in Ketal, we had one bin with Cokes and one with beer, and we didn't mix them. We used small, square waste baskets and cut air holes in the sides with a Dremel. We also went through a lot of cold water, iced tea, and Gatorade. That's three water-based drinks. I made Gatorade from powder and iced tea from concentrate that I brewed. I found three half-gallon juice bottles that fit perfectly along the edge of the refrigerator, just below the top-loading lid opening, and I kept the in-use bottles there, always in the same order from left to right, and marked on the screw top in case someone forgot the order. Now, a current boat, which has a smaller refrigerator and its front opening, we use quart bottles, but again, everything is in exactly the same place all the time. Now, I also had in both places, a bottle of juice for breakfast or can of V8, a bottle of milk, and they also had their exact homes so we didn't pick them up by mistake. The second thing is to have some drinks ready for use and some in waiting. In addition to the ready for use drinks, I kept two other half gallon bottles of water in the back corner of the refrigerator, chilling down. When I needed to refill the in use bottles, these were what I used. I didn't have to get to them so often, so it didn't matter that they were less accessible. In this way, I always had cold water to mix up whatever we needed, Gatorade, iced tea, whatever, so we could have a new supply ready to drink immediately. Now, if you don't have space for that many bottles, I still recommend having a rotational system with whatever size and however many bottles you do have room for. If you haven't yet been in a tropical summer without air conditioning, you're probably wondering about the amount of drinks I'm talking about. When temperatures are over 100 degrees, we each drink over one and a half gallons of cold drinks a day, occasionally over two gallons if we took particularly long hikes. Other boats in the same locales report drinking about the same amount. Okay, point number three is to restock before going to bed. Refilling the refrigerator before going to bed does two things. It gives you warm drinks all night to chill down, so you've got an adequate supply for the next day. And it allows the refrigerator to do the most work during the coolest time of the day. Finally, store the drinks low in the refrigerator. This is particularly true if you have a top loader. The lower sections are the coldest in the refrigerator. It's best to have the weight lower, and your drinks are probably the heaviest things you have in the refrigerator. And if the drinks are on the bottom, they can't fall onto fragile foods, such as your vegetables, tomatoes, um, whatever else you may have. Actually, I don't refrigerate tomatoes too often unless they're cut. 
It may take you a few tries to get your drink system perfect, but these tips will help you. I know for us that having plenty of cold drinks make the summers in tropical areas enjoyable instead of just something to get through. And we don't have unlimited power. Solar panels provide about 95% of our power, with the other 5% coming from our alternator or occasionally from a generator. You really can have cold drinks from solar power. I hope you found this episode of the Boat Galley podcast to be useful and give you some new thoughts on cruising. Please be sure to sign up and tell your friends about it. <music>